Did you know that the use of sold cars usually accounts for around 80 to 90 percent of the emissions footprint of a typical car company? That's quite impressive, right? In the final series of this year's Corporate Climate Responsibility in the Monitor, we'll shed some light on what the automotive industry is doing to handle its climate impact and the gaps that still need to be filled. Looking only at 2030, we saw that even the targets are insufficient. Four of the five manufacturers either don't have any 2030 emissions targets or only present inadequate ones. Amongst the companies, Stellantis is the only one that has committed to an absolute emissions reduction of 30% compared to 21, 2021 levels. While this is not even fully aligned with the 1.5 compatible pathway, this target shows that it is possible to set a transparent and ambitious reduction goal in absolute numbers. But also the longer term carbon neutrality and net zero pledges are unsubstantiated and vague. Toyota, Ford, Volkswagen and General Motors all talk about future carbon neutrality, but the question is how. Ford, for example, wants to be carbon neutral in 2050, but doesn't even have an emission reduction target. And it gives away some vague plans about neutralizing remaining emissions with carbon removals. Toyota also wants to be carbon neutral in 2050, but doesn't even tackle the sector's biggest challenge, the phase out of the com internal combustion engine. So the automotive industry sample still struggles with the basics of corporate sustainability. But as for all sectors, there are also key transition measures that are relevant for the car makers. And the CCRM identified the phase out of the internal combustion engine, the phase in of zero emission vehicles, both light duty and heavy duty, the improvement of the efficiency of electric cars that run on batteries, the increased procurement of near zero steel and aluminium and the production of low carbon batteries. You can read the details on how the companies performed on all of these in the full report. And on the website, you will also find the Carbon Market Watch policy brief and the full analysis of the fashion tech, agri-food and auto sectors, as well as the aggregate analysis by New Climate.